If Falcon 9 is the workhorse rocket that secures frequent launch contracts for SpaceX, then Falcon Heavy is the powerhouse built to tackle the most prestigious and extraordinarily high-value missions. Recently, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy once again secured a monumental payload contract worth billions from NASA. This adds yet another milestone to the impressive legacy of missions that have solidified this rocket's reputation. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In recent years, the Ingenuity helicopter on Mars made history by proving that flying a helicopter on another planet is possible. Now, NASA is set to take that concept a step further with a groundbreaking mission, launching an autonomous aircraft to explore an even more distant world, the icy moon Titan that orbits Saturn. Choosing the right contractor for such a mission is indeed a critical decision. The spacecraft must meet NASA's requirements, including compatibility with the payload, ability to transport it far into space, and a high degree of reliability during launches. It comes as no surprise that SpaceX's Falcon Heavy was ultimately selected by NASA for this mission. SpaceX celebrated the achievement on social media posting, Falcon Heavy selected by NASA to launch Dragonfly mission to Saturn's moon Titan. On January 25th, NASA officially announced Falcon Heavy had been chosen to launch the $3.3 billion Dragonfly mission, which will investigate the potential for life on Saturn's massive moon Titan. Falcon Heavy is SpaceX's current heavy lift rocket, larger than the frequently used Falcon 9, but smaller than the Starship that's still undergoing testing. Although Falcon Heavy has been launched far less frequently than Falcon 9, it's consistently been tasked with the most valuable and high-stakes missions for government agencies like NASA and the U.S. Space Force. Notably, Falcon Heavy has a flawless track record, having never failed a mission. This impeccable reliability is a key reason why it remains a top choice for the U.S. government's most critical and ambitious space endeavors. This time, the NASA launch contract awarded to SpaceX is a fixed price agreement valued at $256 million, including launch services and other mission-related costs. If all goes as planned, Falcon Heavy will launch the car-sized Dragonfly rotorcraft during a three-week window in July of 2028. The spacecraft will then embark on a six-year journey to Titan, the second biggest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. This contract value is significantly higher than some of NASA's other science missions launched by Falcon Heavy. For example, Europa Clipper mission launched on October 14th aboard Falcon Heavy cost NASA $178 million under a 2021 contract. The Psyche asteroid mission launched a year earlier on another Falcon Heavy cost $117 million as per a 2020 contract. Naturally, the higher cost reflects the increased complexity of the Dragonfly mission. Unlike other missions, Dragonfly will use a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, RTG, to provide power. Additional costs related to mission management and RTG handling likely contributed to the increased budget. To illustrate, in 2021, NASA gave SpaceX a $331 million contract to launch the first two elements of the Lunar Gateway using Falcon Heavy, a mission requiring complex preparations like extended payload fairing and additional pre-launch processing. Now, the Dragonfly, being built by the John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, is set to arrive at Titan in 2034. Over two and a half years, this nuclear-powered drone will conduct one flight per Titan day, roughly equivalent to 16 Earth days, to explore prebiotic chemistry at various pre-selected sites on this frigid moon, which is known to harbor organic materials. While the Dragonfly mission passed a series of independent technical reviews early last year and remains on track for its original 2027 launch date, NASA delayed setting the final launch date due to uncertainties about the funding available for mission development this year and next. The Biden admin's proposed FY25 budget request for NASA unveiled in early March allocates $2.7 billion for planetary exploration, including Dragonfly. The mission's total life cycle cost is now projected to be $3.3 billion, according to NASA. This final figure significantly exceeds the mission's initial estimated cost when Dragonfly was first selected in 2019 as the fourth mission under NASA's New Frontiers program, which capped development at $1 billion. 
NASA cited several factors for the budget increase, including design iterations, supply and chain issues stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic, and additional funding for a heavy lift launch vehicle to shorten the spacecraft's travel time to Titan despite the delayed launch. It's unclear how NASA will adjust to manage the program's costs, but we sincerely hope this exciting and important mission doesn't get canceled like other space missions did earlier this year. Titan's size is far from its only intriguing characteristic. This icy moon features seas and lakes of hydrocarbons, making it the only known celestial body aside from Earth to have stable liquid on the surface. Furthermore, organic compounds, the carbon-based building blocks of life as we know it, are abundant on Titan. As a result, some scientists suggest that Titan could support life, either on its surface or within its suspected subsurface ocean of liquid water. Dragonfly is specifically designed to explore these possibilities and shed light on this largely uncharted world. With contributions from partners around the globe, Dragonfly's scientific payload will characterize the habitability of Titan's environment, investigate the progression of prebiotic chemistry on Titan, where carbon-rich material and liquid water may have been mixed for an extended period, and search for chemical indications of whether water-based or hydrocarbon-based life once existed on Saturn's moon, NASA officials wrote in the update. This nuclear-powered spacecraft will operate for approximately two and a half Earth years on the surface of Titan, traveling from one location to another to gain insights into various landscapes. Not only Falcon Heavy, but Falcon 9 is also ready to take on important missions, one of which includes launching the Firefly Aerospace Lunar Lander to the moon. Firefly Aerospace recently announced its Blue Ghost Lunar Lander completed environmental testing at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in mid-October and is now ready to be shipped to Kennedy Space Center in Florida. NASA and SpaceX plan to launch the lander from LC-39A atop of Falcon 9 during a six-day window that opens no earlier than the middle of January. This mission will be known as Ghost Riders in the Sky. Blue Ghost will carry a variety of payloads to the moon, some of which are in support of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. CLPS pairs scientific payloads developed by NASA with commercial lunar landers headed for the moon on private missions. The environmental testing subjected Blue Ghost to extreme temperatures like those it will experience in flight and on the moon, in addition to high levels of vibration and acoustic noise to simulate launch conditions. Firefly Aerospace says its lunar lander performed well during the testing. Blue Ghost aced environmental testing and proved the lander's performing 100% as expected, which is a testament to the incredible Firefly team, Firefly Aerospace CEO Jason Kim said in a statement. This team has gone above and beyond with innovative testing approaches to ensure Blue Ghost is flight ready. While we know there will be more challenges ahead, I'm confident this team has what it takes to softly touch down on the moon's surface and nail this mission. When it launches, Blue Ghost will carry 10 different payloads for NASA, including one that will test a new electrostatic system to repel harmful moon dust. The lander will take 40 days to travel to the moon, where it will land in Mercurium, a lunar sea, a large basin of basalt that was home to the 1969 crash landing of the Soviet Union's Luna 15 probe. Once there, Blue Ghost will spend one lunar day, about 14 Earth days, operating its payloads before the cold, dark lunar night sets in and depletes the lander of its solar power source. Blue Ghost will operate for a few hours once night sets in, taking in images of the lunar sunset and collecting data on how the surface of the moon behaves during lunar dusk. Blue Ghost's payloads include a lunar retroreflector that will be used to take precise Earth-Moon distance measurements. The lunar planet Vac Vacuum, developed by Honeybee Robotics, that'll sample moon dust, and the stereo camera for lunar plume surface studies, a tiny camera that'll capture detailed images of how the lunar surface reacts with the lander's exhaust plumes during landing. NASA's increasingly turning to commercial landers to deliver its science payloads to the moon through the CLPS program. In August, the agency awarded Intuitive Machines $117 million to carry six agency science instruments to the moon's south pole in 2027 on one of the company's robotic moon landers. The company landed its Odysseus spacecraft on the moon in February this year, the first time a private spacecraft ever landed on the moon in what was the first U.S. moon landing since 1972. NASA's been developing its own robotic lunar rover known as Viper, but canceled this program in July due to rising costs. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.